It's Throwback Thursday, and we're doing the throwback tag. Stay tuned to see how far we're throwing it back. Hello, everyone. My name is Misty Nicole from LadyPreferstoSave.com, and today I am bringing you the throwback tag all about childhood memories, high school, all those kind of fun things, which I originally saw the other day on Christopher Cupcake's channel, which I will link below. I will also go ahead and link all of the questions from the tag. So if you would like to participate, definitely, definitely do that. I am going to tag in three people at the end of this video. So without further ado, let's get started. And so for the first question in the tag is, what year were you born in? And for that, I'm going to give you a David Copperfield response, which was, I was born and I grew up. And that's going to be about that question in the tag is do I have any childhood photos of myself and that's a little bit harder for me because first when I had my first adult uh, living situation out of college by myself I had an adorable little townhouse and I had a massive massive flood due to pipes bursting when I was out there for the weekend and so a lot of my photo albums and things of that sorting were destroyed and the second thing is I had a few photos that did survive and when I got in contact with my birth mother when she found me several years after that she had requested baby photos and so I thought it would be a generous thing to send them to her. She decided to cease contact with me for personal reasons and returned my photos to me but they were in an album completely, completely destroyed. And so with that, I don't have any photos um, of myself from my childhood, but I did reach out to a few family friends. And so they were kind enough to send me a couple digital pictures. So I will put the little montage of me up right now. cute little kid and the few photos that you did get to see represented me in my life. I grew up in New Jersey and then lived in SoCal for a few years. We moved back to Jersey and then to where my grandmother and uncle originated from which was Southwest Virginia and then I went to school in Europe and went to college in several places in the United States and married here in the Deep South. And so I have lived in a myriad of places and my childhood was no exception. So it was pretty awesome. Not a whole lot of pictures to be shown, but the ones that I do have are pretty cute. And so there's that. Third question is, what TV shows did you grow up watching? Mm, okay. Let's see, that's a good question. That should probably age me a little bit too. Um, <laughs> first, when I was a little girl, Disney was not a cable channel in so much as like part of basic TV packages. It was a premium channel. And so when you got free weekends on Disney, it was a pretty big deal. And so one of my favorite shows when it was free was the Mickey Mouse Club. And when I was a little girl, Justin Timberlake and Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears were in the Mouse Club. I also loved Disney shows like Darkwing Duck and Tailspin and Rescue Rangers and the Gummy Bears. I also loved reruns of Rainbow Bright and He-Man and She-Ra. With my uncle growing up, I used to watch a lot of old black and white shows like The Monsters and The Addams Family and um, Dark Shadows and I Love Lucy and uh, Little Acres and things like that. So that was really fun. 
I also loved music growing up. And so I remember when MTV actually played music. And so there was, uh, let me see, Headbangers Ball and Yo! MTV Raps and, um, you know, like actual countdown shows. So if you had a popular video that you really liked, you had to wait a whole hour for that number to come right on back around. And this was before, you know, digital files. So if you wanted to hear a song on MTV or the radio, you got a cassette deck, right? And you had to have a dual one and you could put yourself a little tape in it and you could record your jam right on off the radio. And then with the other side, you could make mixtapes. And if you really, really liked somebody or you wanted to give them a gift, you made them a mixtape. So. MTV was a, was a big thing. Also, I loved comedies and my shows, my shows were the Golden Girls and Designing Women. Still love them to this day. I also love 227 and Amen and Frasier was one of my shows. And let's see what else. Uh, Blossom. Blossom was a favorite that I always liked watching. And I don't know if everybody remembers this, but uh, Dinosaurs was one of my favorites growing up. I absolutely loved that show. It was so, so cute. I also liked the Jetsons and the Storks in terms of like animated shows. So my tastes were all over the place. The next question is, what did I want to be when I was growing up and do I still want to be that? Well, when I was a little girl, I wanted to be a few different people. Not so much a career, but people. I, emu I wanted to emulate certain people. I wanted to be like Johnny Cochran. I wanted to save the world like Jane Goodall. And I wanted to paint like Pablo Picasso. Lofty, to say the least. Good news, I did go to law school and I have my master's in art history. And so I actually got to do some art restoration and intern at a few museums. And I also was a practicing attorney Though I have not saved the world and am not an anthropologist nor a primatologist, I do consider myself pretty eco-savvy. And to the extent that in high school, I actually helped my school with a lot of zero waste initiatives. I also was big into human rights and actually went to quite a few protests in my high school years, including ones after my uncle's passing with Soul Force and the Anti-Defamation League, the Jewish League, um, PFLAG. I could go on and on. I've done quite a few things in that arena. And so that was something that was very important to me. It's still very important to me. And would I still want to do them? I will maintain my legal license indefinitely. Um, I don't know that I would ever want to practice in a small setting. Maybe that'll change in the future. Would I ever want to work in a museum? Well, I'm not sure I would ever want to curate or work in a gallery, but that doesn't mean that in a future time, if I live in a different place, that I might not do, you know, be a docent um, or in some kind of volunteer capacity. The next question is, do I have a video of myself when I was younger? And the answer is no. And the next question is, what were some of the toys that I played with as a child? And let's see if anybody will hear this list and be able to tell the decade that I grew up in. Let's see. I had Tamagotchis, Beanie Babies, Furbies, Boppets, Polly Pockets, Tickle Me Elmos, Sky Dancers, Gem. Holiday Barbies, including the later Bob Mackie Barbies, Milk Caps, Easy Bake Oven, uh, Talk Boys, Net TV, Skip It, Creepy Crawlers, Moon Shoes, Treasure Trolls, all things Lisa Frank. Um, the red Duplo like Lego bag, if anybody's ever seen this, it's like a rabbit, like it was plush and it had a zipper. I was a big one. Um, I loved the boxcar children books and Anne of Green Gables 
and I had Scarlett O'Hara Barbies, if anybody remembers those. And I had several computers. We played a lot of educational games like number munchers and math munchers. I also had, let's see, the Oregon Trail. That was a big one. I played the King's Quest series of games quite a bit. I also really, really liked 3D puzzles and what else was a big one? Like board games like Monopoly and Hungry Hungry Hippos. Um, Don't Break the Ice, that was a big one. And beyond that, like artsy things, rock tumblers, sand art, slime was a big one that irritated my grandmother. She hated that stuff. Um, hmm. I liked marbles a lot as a kid. I used to collect those. I used to collect um, like stones and gemstones and big agate stones. I had a lot of those in my room. I loved reading a lot of books, including, say, Anne of Green Gables, Boxcar Children, um, Babysitter's Club, Goosebumps. R.L. Stein was a favorite. And beyond that, I, you know what else I loved? Um, Etch-a-Sketch and, uh, you know, those things you put up to the, the viewfinders. I used to love the viewfinders. Those were awesome. The next question is, what was the most embarrassing thing that happened to me as a child? And that's kind of a funny one. Um, I was in tap, ballet, jazz, and modern as a child. And in Atlantic City, a lot of the dance classes were conducted by off-season dancers. A lot of the gentlemen in the area would you know, work with the academy schools for lessons. And in my tap class, the number was basically shuffle ball changing your way off of a stage. And, you know, we were supposed to go off stage and come back around and I was the leader of that particular solo. And unfortunately, when I exited off of the stage, there was a huge tray of cupcakes. And so I stopped to eat a cupcake and forgot to lead everybody back on stage. And then when, you know, they were trying to escort me off and back onto the stage, I actually went back on stage tap dancing with a cupcake in both hands and then after that, for quite a while, my nickname was Sprinkles. And so that was kind of a crazy one. Next question is to read something that you wrote in kindergarten. And again, we didn't keep papers like that around. The next question was, what were my three favorite songs growing up? And again, I was a weirdo kid, so I didn't necessarily have particular bands that I listened to, but I did have a thing for musicals and musical scores. And so a few of the things I remember off the top of my head, I was obsessed with um, My Fair Lady and The Sound of Music and Gigi and the score to Thoroughly Modern Millie. And I also was a huge, huge fan of Shirley Bassey, especially like, you know, the song Big Spender. That was my jam. The next question was, what was your funniest Halloween costume growing up? And so for me, that's another kind of interesting one. My uncle made all of my Halloween costumes each year. And so they became, as I grew, a little more theatrical each year. Some of the highlights on the reel include Patty Duke from Valley of the Dolls, Barbara Eden from I Dream of Jeannie. And when I was nine, I went as a Dame Edna. Yeah. The next question is, tell a funny story from your childhood. And so one of my funniest recollections was when I was about 12 or 13, and I was in the car with my grandmother and her mother going to the grocery store. Now, at the time, my great-grandmother was in early stages of dementia, and so 
she would kind of go in and out of alertness and sometimes, you know, common words and phrasings would be transcribed and, you know, transposed onto something else. So keep that in mind with this story. I'm in the back seat of the SUV, just kind of, you know, playing with a toy or doing, I don't know what I was doing, something. And, you know, these two are in the front seat and um, they were going to the grocery store both of them couponed for things. And so I remember hearing my great grandmother say, Carolyn, I need to pick up some things at the store. Well, of course we knew that because we're on the way to the grocery store. She responds to her mother, yes, mother, I know. What do you need to get? So I make sure to remind you to get it. And then Nanny goes and says, I need to pick up a couple health aids. My grandmother goes, oh, nanny said, yep, I have a 60 cent off coupon for sickle cell anemia and it's triple coupon at the store. And so I need to be able to pick that up. Now at this point, my ears perked up because I thought sickle cell anemia, what in the, what, you know, no. So I was listening very intently at this point. See, what had happened is that Nanny had a coupon for 60 cents off of Citrusil, and it got fixed up as sickle cell anemia. And as two white women in a car, you know the likelihood of that happening. And so that was kind of crazy. So then, you know, without missing a beat, my grandmother goes, oh, well, that's wonderful. I've got a coupon for you too. We'll have sickle cell anemia together. Meanwhile, roll it ahead a few hours where I was able to get out of the car and call my uncle who was at work because this was in a day kittens before cell phones were in your pockets. And so I call him and I said, D, well, you're not gonna believe this. Your mother and your sister and me were in a car. We went to the store. Guess what? Got a great deal on sickle cell anemia. There was a long pause on the other end of the phone. And then he replied in a very low voice so no one at work would hear him. He said, Patty, because he always called me Patty, because he loved Patty LaBelle. He said, Patty, you get the hell away from them heifers. They ain't right. Click, and the phone goes silent. The question is, is there anything special that I kept from my childhood? And, you know, not really. Um, Again, we moved so much, we really didn't hold on to things. Next question is, what was something weird that you used to do as a child? I don't know if this is weird or not, but for some reason, I had a hard time eating ice cream without my teeth hurting. And so I would, you know, take regular ice cream, like, you know, briars out of a container or something like that. And I would mash it up almost like a deconstructed soft serve. And for some reason doing that, it didn't bother me to eat it. And that used to irritate my grandmother to no end because I would sit there kind of really tactilely, just, you know, mashing together ice cream. And I used to remember that it irritated her to no end that I would do that. And another thing I used to do that was very weird as a child was that I had a thing for my food not touching on a plate. And I still have this somewhat. I don't like things like, you know, say a hot pasta and a salad or something touching together. You know, I still to this day don't really like that. And so as a kid, they had to provide me divided trays because I didn't like it. And I still don't like it, so I guess not much has changed in that area. But at least now, I can provide myself my own sippy cups and plates, and so I don't have to worry about that anymore. The next question is the scariest thing that happened to me as a child, and that was, I remember being in preschool, and Hurricane Hugo swept up the East Coast, and it 
the eye of the storm settled in South Jersey on the coast where I was at. And the problem was a lot of the bridges and things closed. So my parents worked on the mainland and I was in Atlantic City, well, outside of Atlantic City. And so they couldn't get to me. And so we were left with the sisters um, at the convent. They moved the kindergarten and the preschool classes into the convent. And uh, I remember being in the uh, dining hall, I guess you could say, of the convent. And we were in the eye of the storm and it was really sunny and pretty. And all of a sudden the sky turns black and it was like a million locust flying amongst themselves, kind of a, a buzzing sound. And the eye lifted and we were in the middle of this wind pattern and on three walls around us, the stained glass windows, which were the entire length of those rooms, started just shattering. And there probably was a good 120 children plus the sisters um, and some of the staff members in the room. And I remember the sisters throwing us under these long wooden tables and kind of, you know, pushing us together. And I remember one of the sisters, you know, on top of me, shielding me from the glass coming down on us. And it was probably the scariest childhood memory in so much as it happened so fast. And it wasn't like something that you could prevent because it was nature. And in that second, you feel really small. Even as a child, this sense that the world is so much bigger than you. And it puts... And the last question is, how is the world different now than when I was a child? You know, this is a really subjective question, but in my opinion, speaking only for my own self, I believe that the world is a different place because we have the internet. And the internet makes us so aware of the world that we live in, in such a factual, instantaneous existence, as it were. And then came social media, where you got to experience the perspective of other people in real time. But in some ways, I'm not sure that it's better. In so much as this, when I was a child, there were great days and there were horrible days and there were good moments and there were bad moments and just like anybody else's experience. But now children have to be judged by the world on their worst and best days and people are not kind. You have to really consider why there's so much bullying and so much more just hostility in the world. And I think the internet plays a big part in that. Maybe the world isn't as good as it'll get, but maybe it was not as bad as I had originally thought that it was. You know, looking back on it, I was very blessed to have the childhood that I had. And for that, I am eternally grateful. So with that said, those were my questions for this throwback tag, and I hope that you all found it entertaining, or at least thank you for watching it and sticking through it. I know lately I've had a lot of longish videos, so thank you so much. Now, I do want to say again that if you want to do this tag, I'm going to go ahead and put those questions below. Feel free. But I am going to tag in three people, so hopefully they will pick this up and do it. I would love to hear from Melissa of the House of Plaid Paws. I would love for Roxanne of the Guy's Life and for Love Esty to pick this up. I would love to see what your childhood experiences were and to hear a little bit of a different perspective for some other ladies. And again, the inscription bar below, all the questions. I'm also going to list their channels. I'm going to list Christopher Cupcakes, where I saw this originally from. He is an amazing YouTuber, so definitely give all of those wonderful people some love. As always, please be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications and leave me a comment below and let me know what your favorite childhood memory is, what your favorite throwback was. 
And as always, please be kind to yourself and to others. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank <laughs> you.